In today's video, I'll be showing you guys, wait, let's do this the right way. In today's video, I'll be showing you guys how to edit like Iman Gazi in CapCut PC, just like this. Let's get started. So I'm going to use this talking head video. I'll leave a download down below. You can download and you try your hands on it. So with this, we just drag and drop in our timeline. Let me take the volume down. And first of all, when you look at his videos, he adds a little bit of vignettes and this is how you get that. Go to effect and I've already added to my favorite, but you can find it down in one of these. So with this, I'll just drag and drop on the video and then go to the right side and take it down to somewhere 40 to 50%. So with this, let me just click on the video. When I click on effects, you can see it adds a little bit darkness to the edges and that draws the viewer's attention to the video. Next, he does this a lot. He adds a little bit of contrast to his lower thirds and that's really a pro way of adding that. With that, just bring in any image. This is an image I got online. Stretch it and make it a little bit long. Then click on that. Go to the right side of the software. Scroll down. Go to canvas and click on this drop down menu. Then select color. Let's click on this to bring all the colors out. Then click on black. We're going to use black color for the background. Then go to mask, click on that and click on rectangle. Now click on this reverse icon and increase that to cover the whole screen so the image will disappear. So now we have that, right click on the image and create compound clip. Now drag that and drop it on top of the video. Let's make it the same length as the video. Now with the compound clip selected, go to the right side, still on mask, click on split. Then use the on-screen controls, rotate it to negative or minus 180 degrees. Now drag this a little bit down so we can cover just the lower third on the screen. Then go to the right side, increase the feather to 100%. Now we need to animate that to come in. With that, go to the first frame of that and click on the compound clip. Then go to the right side, click on basic, scroll down on opacity, make a keyframe there. Then go 15 frames forward and make another keyframe on opacity. Now use this very arrow to go to the first keyframe we created and take the opacity back to zero. So when you look carefully, opacity comes in and it fills the lower third on the screen. And now when you look at it, it comes in harshly, so we need to make it smooth. With that, right click on that, click on show keyframe animation and click on opacity. Now click on this drop down menu to bring the graphs out. Then click on this very keyframe, change it to auto curve. Then we'll do the same thing with the first one. Click on that, make sure it's highlighted and the color is blue. Then we'll turn it to auto curve. Then right click on that and hide keyframe animation. Now we need to bring in our images. So we just go to your browser and go to the home page of your YouTube page or whoever you want to animate the images for. Then you have to change the background or the theme to dark mode. So with this, I'll just click on this icon, click on appearance and choose dark theme. So then we can have the dark background. So with this, I'm just going to select these three videos. So I don't know about the PC. What? But when you're using Mac, use Shift, Command, and 4 to bring the screenshot icon out. So you can just select these three and make sure you select the text too and release it. And it's going to save on your desktop. Then go to where the image was saved, drag and drop in the media side. I already have one, so I'm going to leave it just like that. So with that, I'll just drag and drop in the timeline make sure it's in the main timeline and not at the top. So what we are going to use, if you have Photoshop, it's quite easy over there. But for the sake of majority who don't have Photoshop, we're going to use CapCut to cut all the images out. So with this, click on that, go to the right side, scroll down on canvas, click on that and select color. Then with these colors, you can use green or any other color that's not in the image. When you look at my image, it has green, so I'm not going to use green. I'm going to use yellow instead. So I just click and select that. Then go to mask, click on that and click on rectangle. We're going to start with the first image. Use the on-screen controls, shape it to select this very image. So I'm going to work on that. So when you're doing, just take your time to select it nicely. We want only this image. Then go to the right side on round corners, put in somewhere 15 to 20. So we can get these round edges. Now go to this very icon. You can see these three dashes at the top. 
click on that and select export still frame so with this we are only going to export that very frame just name it i'll name this one image one and then select where you want to save it so with my i'm going to create a folder in download with resolution leave it just like that with format we're going to choose jpeg import project make sure it's selected with this it means after exporting that very still image it's going to import into your project for you without doing much work with that so we leave it on and click on export so right here you can see CapCut already did the import for us we can find it in our media already so now we're going to work on the rest of the images so with this click on that make sure you have the mask selected on the right side and before we move this make sure you memorize this number the y axis because we don't want to move that we just want to move the x axis so with this i'm just going to move it and select the middle one and since they are all the same it's going to work perfectly with this and when you look carefully at y it was 92 so we need to change it back to 92. Then just like we did earlier on, we're gonna export this tool image. So click on these three dashes, click on export tool image. And this I'll name it image two and click on export. So now I'm gonna do with the third one and I'll be fast with this side. Now we have all the three store images imported already. So the next thing to do, we're gonna select the text that comes with this. So with that, just click on this, then go to the right side and click on mask. Now click on this redo icon, so it will go back to the previous position. And with that done, click on rectangle. And this time around, we're just gonna select the test. So we start with this very one, shape it to select just that test. So with that done, we're going to export this still image too. Go to the three dashes, click on that and click on export still frame. Then this time around, let's name it text one. We save it at where we saved the previous ones. We leave everything just like it is and click on export. So right here, you can see it's already imported in our media side. We're going to do for the next one, click on the image. And make sure you memorize this y-axis figures because we don't want to do anything to the y-axis remember earlier on so we just move it to this very text and then you can see my y-axis changes so i need to change it back to minus 183 and then when you look at this we need to work on the mark so we stretch this side so we can select all the text and then i'll export this very still image too so i'll go to these three dashes click on that and click on export still frame I'll name this text two and click on export. Now I'm gonna do the same thing for the third one and I'll be fast with this. Now we have all of them and it's gonna be six since it was three images. So with this, we'll just bring in the image one first, drag and drop in the timeline. Let's move it to this very first frame stretch it to make it the same length as the rest of them and then delete this one we don't need it anymore so we just delete that so click on that go to the right side and click on cut out then click on chroma key and select the color picker then we're going to select this yellow side and increase the strength a little bit and be careful with this don't go too much because then it's going to affect the video too depending on your color that you use so with my i think i can go for somewhere too now i'm going to bring test one since test one was below image one so this my text one drag and drop in the timeline make it the same length as the rest of them then with that selected go to the right side click on cut out and click on chroma key then click on color picker and select the yellow side now I'll increase that to two so i'll just take off the yellow part so right there you can see it's below this very one so now the next one to bring in the second image this is our image two drag and drop in the timeline make it the same length as the rest of them then with that selected go to the right side and click on cut out and then chroma key then select this color picker and select the yellow part now increase the strength to take out the yellow part so i'll just increase it to somewhere two and now i need to bring in text two that's the one below image two that's why it's really important to name them so you don't get yourself confused so we'll bring in text two, drag and drop in the timeline make it the same length as the rest of them and with that selected go to the right side still on cut out click on chroma key 
then click on color picker and select the yellow part now increase the strength for it to disappear and now i'm going to do the same thing for the rest of the image and the test and i'll be fast with this side so now we're done we have all the six on the timeline now we need to make a compound clip of it so with this we're going to select the first image and also the text one then right click on that and create a compound clip and now the second one click on image 2 make sure you select that hold command or control and select text 2 then right click that and create compound clip so now do the same thing for the third one select the two right click that and create compound clip the next step select all the three compound clips at the top go to the right side click on basic on scale change it to somewhere 80 to 85 and drag it down to this very side so with my I can go to somewhere here looks pretty cool on this side now we need to animate each of them to come in so I'm going to start with the first compound clip that's our first image and the text on this side so with that I'll just select that make sure you click on that and take your playhead to the very first frame of it go to the right side and click on animation and click on in then scroll down and select slide up now increase the duration of it to 1.1 seconds now we need to do the same thing for the second one but before that we need to go 10 frames forward and make sure you take your playhead to the very first frame of this very one then go 10 frames forward or pressing shift and then the arrow forward and it's going to take you 10 frames forward and with that done we just move the second one to where the playhead is so this comes in first and then when it's on 10th frame the second one will start coming in so with that we we'll just click on that second compound clip go to the right side and click on animation then still on in we we'll scroll down and then select slide up and then increase the duration to 1.1 seconds then we'll do the same animation for the third one make sure you take your playhead to the first frame of that second one and this time around go 15 frames forward and drag this third one to where the playhead is so this will be 15 and this will be 10 then with the top compound clip selected go to the right side still on animation and in scroll down and select slide up and change the duration to 1.1 seconds so now I'll play and show you guys what we have so far so when you look at Iman's edit it has this black dust to it and we're going to do the same thing in CapCut 2 so with that just go to the right side and click on effect then with my you can see i've already added to the favorites that's black noise that we're going to use but you can scroll down and find it in one of these so we're going to start with the first one drag and drop on this very compound clip so that's going to be this very one and let's take the speed to somewhere two to four we don't want it to be that much i think i can go for one but with this you can choose not to add to it but just to add extra touch to it then we're going to do the same thing for the rest of these two so just click on that drag black noise on that and take the speed to somewhere one to two then do it for this drag black noise on it and take it to somewhere one and now we need to add a little bit shake to it go to the left side and click on effect and we're going to use camera shake to for it and you can find it also under somewhere under lens or so so with that just click on that and we're going to drag it and drop on this very compound clip and with the camera shake effect selected we take the range to somewhere to we don't want it to be that much so two and then the speed we can take it also to somewhere one to two and then we'll do the same thing for this two now the last thing to do is to add some motion blur to it so we're going to start with this down compound clip and once again we're going to use the old trick that we use to add motion blur click on that command c or control c to copy then command v or control v to paste on top of it so this is going to be exactly like this very one and make sure that length and everything is the same then with that selected go to the left side click on effect and this time around we're going to use motion blur drag and drop on the one that we just duplicate then take your playhead to somewhere in the middle so we can see exactly how it looks like then go to the right side with horizontal take it to 51 and then with the strength take it to somewhere 90 to 100 now click on the compound clip so it will bring the rest of the parameters and with that take your playhead to the very first frame of it 
make sure you've selected the one that we duplicated and go to the right side of the software scroll down and make a keyframe on opacity then go to where the animation ends when you look carefully this arrow ends at this place that's where the animation ends take your playhead there and make sure you've selected that very one then make a keyframe again on opacity and this time around take it to zero so we do the same thing for this second one click on that command c or control c to copy then command v or control v to paste on top of it then go to the left select motion blur drag and drop on the duplicate one then go to the right side change horizontal to 51 and increase the strength to somewhere 90 to 100. now click on that to bring the rest of the parameters out scroll down and make a keyframe on opacity then go to where the animation ends when you look the arrow is here so we take the playhead there and make sure you've selected that one then go to the right side and make a keyframe on opacity once again and then turn the opacity to zero so now i'm going to do the same thing for the third one but i'll be fast on this side and now we look at how all of them looks like Iman does this a lot that's jump cut so with this let's say if you have a dead space in between them and you want to make a cut we just cut it b to bring the blade tool out cut this side and then when you have a dead space we just cut that part out a to bring the normal cursor out select this and delete that so with that i'm going to select this second one go to scale on the right side and increase the size of it and drag it downwards so now when i play and show you guys it cuts to that very side and he uses this a lot in his edit so you can find more i'll show you guys go to your browser go to youtube and type in foam burn or overlay and make sure whatever you're going to use it's free so you don't get yourself in any copyright issues and i'm going to leave a link to the very one that i think iman uses in his edit i'll leave it down there below you can check on it and download it so when you download and upload you can put it in your media size so this is the very one we're going to use for this so just drag and drop on top of this very one and with this we need to bring the second clip that we want to transition into so i'm going to bring this just drag and drop in this side so the overlay or the foam bend transition is going to be on top of that very two clips so i'll go to somewhere on the foam bend transition that i want to use so something like this and cut this side off and always make sure it's within four to eight frames with this kind of transitions so with this i'll choose only four frames of it and trim this side off too and with that done just drag it in the middle of the two clips so as you can see the half of it is on this side and the half of it is on this very side now click on the foam bend transition or the overlay that you're going to use then go to the right side click on mode and select screen and i'll show you guys how it looks like and then you can add some sound effect to it to make it come alive in this playlist you can find out how pro youtubers edit their videos catch you guys on the next one peace